Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. In this episode we explore a home computer that was made from Texas Instruments. It is the TI-99-4A. I will give you some information about the history and the technical details, DJs, details of this awesome computer. After this we explore this machine, take a closer look, if there are obvious faults, if all looks correct, we take some measurements, voltages and shorts and so on, connect this to the TV and test the function. The TN99 for a was released in June 1981 to address some issues of the TN99 with a simplified internal design, um, full travel keyboard, uh, improved graphics and a unique expansion system. At half the price of the original model, sales picked up significant and TI supported the 4A with peripherals including a speech synthesizer and the peripheral expansion system box to contain hardware Add on. The 1981 US launch of the TN 4 a followed Commodore's VIC 20 by several months. By late 1982, TI was dominating the US home computer market, shipping 5,000 computers a day from the factory in Texas. And that's an awesome number. The TI-99 4A is a self-contained console with a motherboard, you see here, form factor like C64, ROM cartridge slot, in this case, oh, yeah. and the full travel keyboard, in this case it feels awesome to tap. In the same case, yeah, obvious. The power supply is external, and our modulator allows to use a television as a monitor. TI Basic is built in in ROMs. And this includes support for graphics, sound and file system. Peripherals included a 5 and a quarter inch floppy disk drive and, con uh, and controller and RS-232 card with two serial ports and one parallel port, a P-code card for Pascal support, a thermal printer, a 300 baud acoustic coupler, a tape drive using standard audio cassettes and a 32 kilobit memory expansion card. That's the uh, peripherals you um, can buy or you could buy in the past. Both TI-99 4 modules used the 16-bit TMS9900 CPU with speed of 3 MHz and the TMS9900 is a single chip implementation of a TI-99 O computer. Also a full 16-bit processor only the system ROM and 265 bytes of scratch pad RAM are available on the 16-bit bus. Only a small portion of the system was 16-bit and used a second 8-bit computer bus for the rest. So it's an 8-bit computer with 16-bit um, in, 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 in a few spots. And one of the key features of the TMS-9900 from the mini computer design uh, that spawned it was the 
inclusion of several sets of processor re registers. The system was typically running a time-sharing or multitasking operating system or being used for real-time computing, both of which benefit from being able to quickly switch among programs. To do this, the TMS-9900 stored several sets of registers in main memory and could switch between the sets of 16 16 bit registers by changing the single workspace pointer register, thereby allowing a very rapid context switching. So, you see, the, um, the foundation of this processor here inside is uh, straightforward for this time. So, Let's see what graphic capabilities this computer had. Graphics in the TN994A are generated by a TMS 9918A. Video display processors, the VDP, with a variant of PAL territories. The VDP was de developed by Texas Instruments and sold independently. So you could buy in this era the, TM the VDP chip without this computer and that allowing it to be used in other systems. It serves as a video processor for the ColecoVision and the CG1000 consoles and an early model um, is part of the MSX computer standard. The TMS 9918A supports character-based and bitmap display model mods modes as well as hardware sprites. There are 32 single color sprites total, but only a maximum of four can be displayed per scan line. Each sprite is either eight by eight or 16 by 16 pixel, and can be scaled two times to 16 by 16 or 32 by 32 pixels. So the expansions you can get for this computer. There are uh, device drivers in the ROMs. Um, when you attach new peripherals, this peripheral is immediately available, so you don't need to install any software or drivers or something like this. All device access uses a, generate, a generic file-based I.O. mechanism allowing new devices to be added without updating software. The peripheral expansion system can hold two RS-232 cards for a total of four RS-232 ports and two parallel printer ports. The peripheral expansion box I talked earlier um, contains own an own power supply, so it you don't use uh, power from the TI 994A and that's very straightforward so you don't need a big power supply for the computer. The, uh, the perfect expansion box included a full height five and a quarter inch uh, floppy with uh, and a 32 kilobyte RAM expansion card. The RS-232 and Paraport card is also available. A P-code card implementing the UCSD P system. And this can be acting as a ROM disk. This drive controller card uh, is also included. And so you can put several diskette drives in this expansion box. The sound capabilities of the TI-994A um, came from a TMS-9919. Later versions, uh, the SN-94624. Um, and these are identical to the SN-76489 used in many other systems. There's a, tr a three voice and one noise. 
and the voices generates queries from 110 hertz to approximately 115 kilohertz. Um, console ROM includes interrupt driven music playback. So that is for the specs. So enough from these lot of facts. It's enough talk. Now oh, let's take a look inside. Open this up. And if all looks correct, we test this thing out. So, so let's here go. Here we are on the bench. Let's take a closer look. This is the keyboard. From this is a little bit smaller with no um, block of keys here. It's a small keyboard. Here we have the extension slot. On the TI-99 the cartridges are like this. This is TI Extended Basic. On the right side we have this expansion slot. On the back side we have a joystick port, a power connector, the screen, uh, screen connector. On the left side we have a joystick port. On the front, on the front we have a power switch. On the other side we have some vent holes. So let's open it up. The screws we have here are all the same length. And on the last step we disconnect the power switch. Open it up. Oh. This way. Put this on the side. And here we have the underside from this machine. And the bottom shielding is a little bit rusty and dirty. Nice. The screws are all the same. Power board. The power connector. And a Molex connector. Oh, here we have the power board with the connector, the switch. There we have the screw.
So here we have it. This the case is very clean. Yeah. Everything falls out. Yeah. Then it's rusty. Rusty, rusty, rusty. So, we have some case parts with nuts and bolts. Slide it out. Then rotate the whole package. And here we have the final interior. Let's clean the thermal paste, zoom a little bit in. So, this. The thermal paste is dry. Here looks all looks very clean. No obvious things. Very clean. No rust. Yeah, looks good. Looks very good. So on the power board it looks also very clean. And here in the case is uh, the connector for the cartridges. Look there. There's an angle piece to connect here. I think you can put this here. It goes on this part, but instead you could plug this in this way. Yeah, no cleaning up, looks good. So, I put this in on the T3 
TV. And then we can test this computer. So and connected, it looks like this. Yeah. So before we test the uh, computer on the TV, we first measuring some voltages, if this power board works correct. Power is on. Now we measure here from ground to here. We have five volts. Twelve volts minus five. It works. So shut this off. So connect this to the board. Now we change the camera angle. Huh? There's the TV. Switch the TV on. So, and there we have it. You see, it's working. Let's try this out. See, it's not that easy to type. Awesome. Incorrect statement. Okay. You see it's working. My skills in uh, TI basics is not that good. So it works. Thumbs up. And the next step is to put this back on the bench and reassemble it. And by the way, the keyboard types very well and feel great. So let's do it. So before we put this together, I will show you some of the main chips. So I forgot this at the disassembly. So here we have a TMS 9929A and that's the video display processor or VDP. This, this is for the picture. Then we have here the TMS9901. This is uh, the programmable system interface. Then we have here the TMS9900, that's the main processor. Then we have, at least we have here, some MCM 681210P from Motorola and that's um, two, uh, 128 by 8 RAM chips. So that's the main chips. And now we put this thing together.
and here we have the main component from the housing the metal shielding was very rusty so I painted this on the upper side and before I painted it I sanded the rust down And here we have it, the TR99 put together and it looks very nice. So let's hook it up to a TV and test if this computer is still working. Everything is hooked up, TV is on. And now let's see if this thing still works. Yeah, it works. Oh, it's loading into basic. And now let's try the cartridge with the extended basic. Yeah. And you see, it reads also the cartridge. Done. So that's it. This is for this video. See, we have bring this to the old shine from back in the day, and it works very fine. So it's a nice little machine uh, i hope you enjoyed this video if you do put thumbs up if you want more videos like this like and subscribe and so i see you on the next one bye